Loda. I play for Team Alliance and I'm from Gothenburg, Sweden. The Dota fans are extremely dedicated and this is not just a game. I had a nick in uh, Dota where I added the Chinese letters for justice to Loda. And a guy had seen this so he had um, like gotten custom made keys for me that said like justice on two keys so I could put it on my keyboard and I have it right now so hopefully it will help me. The reason why everyone fears us is because you can never really know what we're gonna do and we will sometimes switch our playstyle during the tournament. We will just switch the playstyle completely and they don't really know how to prepare for us even though they think they, they know. We like to let the opponents run around and try to do stuff. Sure, they will get one pick-off, they will get two pick-offs, but that doesn't matter. Dota isn't about kills, Dota isn't about gold either. Dota is about winning and taking down the opponent's throne, and you need to win one team fight to do that, pretty much. Winning this year's international it would just be so awesome. It would just be a proof that we we were the best team this year, and, and I, I would just be so happy for the other guys in the team as well, but I really love them. So. I felt from the beginning that this year was going to be a good year and it was going to be our year. So we aim for the top and I think we have the chance to get there. Henrik Amberg, Admiral Bulldog, Trollhättan, Sweden. Joachim Akterhall, Aki, Gothenburg, Sweden. Jerry Lundqvist, EGM, Sweden, Westeros. Jonathan Berg, Loda, Gothenburg, Sweden. Gustav Magnussen, S4, Stockholm, Sweden. So Alliance, the team from Sweden, undefeated in the prelims, made up of the players of Admiral Bulldog, S4, Ake, EGM, the newest addition to the team, and the Dota legend that is Loda. How are they going to do? What are we looking from the players? You know, how have they been individually performing here? What have you got to say about them? Well, I mean, if you look at the statistics, uh, we're going to talk about Loda in a bit, but I was just trying to check and they seem to never lose with any hero and then I realized that they never lost any single match in the tournament. Ever. Ever. But I mean, speaking of Loda in particular, I mean, let's see what their carry players does. He can play the gyrocopter very well and that's I think his favorite hero right now. But he can play just an array of heroes. He can even play Ursa, one of the heroes that we barely ever see. And it works very well with them. With Wisp especially. Exactly. I mean, it's such a hero that when you think about Wisp and someone else, you see more, think of a stunner, normally Chaos Knight or Tiny. Uh, we saw Morphling as well, uh, not by them, but uh, Dignitas did it last, uh, last time. But Ursa has this potential of doing so much burst damage. It works perfectly for that playstyle, and Alliance is the team that can play it best so far. What we saw with the Alliance in China was that they picked the US as well and did the level 1 row strat that everyone was completely baffled about. Right. And they've actually done another uh, mind addition. trick yeah. to their Roshan editions and that, uh, it's just very impressive to see their ingenuity. Yeah, they, uh, they faked going to Rosh and then uh, did a nice wrap around. Ben, individually on the team, who stands out for you for Alliance? Well, Aki, or Aki is pretty much their game pace controller for early game, but Admiral Bulldog is the hero that you can't really ban against, you can't really do anything about it. He always seems to win his lane, and if he even doesn't win his lane, he always comes back and has a huge impact in the middle late game. And the teams have tried to shut him down in multiple ways, but it, they just never really seem to keep him down. And even then, if you do, you have all these other players. So there's not like an all-star or one particular like star player for this team. It's a whole team of stars. You can't, you can't stop them. That's yeah, what it seems and like. also the newest addition, EGM. He is so on point, it seems, like in terms of positional play. Did you just hear, uh, when I was seeing the, the introduction, he comes from Westeros? So is he straight from Game of Thrones? He, he really, like, he said, if you look... It's a pronunciation problem. Is it? Yes. Okay. It's, it's pronounced differently in Swedish, so... I, I thought it was Jerry Stark or something like that. That, that would be awesome. <laughs> it would be awesome. And uh, speaking of awesome, is their opponents. And we're going to meet now the team of LGD China. 这次比赛对我们对我来说 uh, 给自己也没有设什么退路 然后全力以赴, 然后再准备吧 
。外界的话有非常多的质疑，但是我们自己一直是相信自己，我们肯定能行，所以最后我们也做到了。我们 C N 跟 Int 的呃训练确实呃并不是像。并不是每天都有的。虽然说我们在同一个俱乐部，但是在赛场上，我们还是两支独立的队伍。然后都是每个人都有自己的梦想，都要为之努力。在赛场上的话，我们绝对不会留情。但是在场下或者是平时中，然后谁需要帮助的话，我们两个队伍都是非常积极、非常友善的，然后都会提出自己的意见和帮助。因为去年就是给自己留下过遗憾，所以今年会尽全力去拼。能够走到最后一天赛程的队伍都是十分强大的，然后实力实力上的差距都非常微小，然后如果要取得最后的冠军，必须要有呃非常强大的意志力。谢斌，滴滴，中国，湖南；梁发明 ，DDC， 中国，澳门；柳家俊，塞拉，中国上海；张宁，小巴。中国湖南，姚真真，姚，中国湖南。LGD China last year finished third, but they did go through the prelims last year, I believe, undefeated, and also made it all the way to the upper bracket finals. This year, it's determination that will take them all the way to the end. The players Yao, Zhao Wei, DDC, Sila, and DD, guys, on an individual basis as well. What's the team style? Who stands out for you? Who's going to make the plays? I think last year was when Yao really grew into a superstar and proved to, to the world just how good he is. But the most important thing to note about this team is how extremely disciplined they are and how well they mesh together. Last year they were definitely the best team in in terms of discipline. IG went ahead and won, probably through better strategies and of course facing Navi rather than LGD. But I think they are still the most disciplined team, maybe only rivaled by Alliance, and that's why this matchup is going to be so fun to see. All right, and uh, I believe the game's going to be ready, so I'm just going to go around and get some predictions for the match. It's a best of three, of course, the upper bracket. So we can start with you, Ben. We'll go right to the left this time. I'll say 2-1 Alliance. I, I think LGD has a pretty good shot. You can't count them out. I'll say 2-0 for Alliance. All right, Bruno. I want to say LGD China, so I was trying to devise a strategy for them. But you're on my team, though. Yeah, well, I'm on your team, but just for this time, I'm going to okay. disagree for the sake of fun. Um, and I, I have this, they have to pick these heroes, right? LGD, you have to pick Necrolite, Ogre Magi, Meepo, Tusk, and Elder Titan, because... Because the Alliance haven't played against them, so therefore they have a 0% win ratio thus far. You're on. You're <laughs> I knew you were me. doing it. Yes. We spend too much time together, Bruno. All uh, right, yes, let's, uh, it makes perfect sense. Uh, so, okay, well, it looks like we're ready to go to the game. So, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the first match of day two here at the International. It's going to be Alliance versus LGD China. Best of luck to both teams. Alliance versus LGD Gaming. Welcome everybody, day number two. I am Toby One. And I'm Wagamama. And we are here, man, to do Alliance going up against LGDCN. What a game to start our session, oh, yes. second day. This is going to be an amazing best of three. Everyone here knows it. Yeah, man. I, I actually hope we get to three games again. It's not, kind of like the feeling like yesterday when we had our Navi game up and you kind of like said, give us more games. Give us more games because it's just such high quality. This and right now, man, they're actually yeah. like steamrolling through the draft. Yeah, they're really going into it. So we we should really head into this and just watch Hell it. Oh yes, we should. I know I was having a chat to uh, to K-Poptosis about this, about this whole draft. We were just trying to say, all oh, Bruno was looking through his stats. I was looking mainly about, was LGD able to play their style of game throughout the preliminaries? And the biggest thing that we came up with was Alchemist. 100% ban and pick rate as far as teams banning him out. I think it was 11 times teams banned him out. They banned him out once, but every time they had a chance to pick him, it was first pick up. And this game is no different. First pick up because S4 wants Boy, to get LGD, the Bat Rider and the Life Stealer. Yeah, we're talking about LGD. Yeah. And LGD, I just want to take a side note and just note this, that last year the 14-0 by LGD, this year the 14-0 by Alliance. It's so interesting to see these two teams face off now. It was, uh, I talked to S4 why he picked them and he said, well, we have to. They, they had the 14-0 last time, now we picked them. Uh, and I yeah, suppose it, it becomes fate, really. Yeah. It becomes fate. No, really, they just wanted to take on the strong ones. But for the draft now, we see already secured up the hero for Admiral Bulldog on 
uh, Nature's Prophet as LGD first picked Alchemist. And of course, Visage is in the mix again. Yeah, one, one of the most picked up heroes, and of course, uh, one of the most, well, most played by all teams, really. So no surprise to see him there. The Bane, however, appearing again here on the main stage. Really been a massive favorite of also all the teams here is almost a secondary support. Yeah, it's also a pretty early time to pick up Bane because this Visage and Furion, I wouldn't say necessarily Bane is amazing against any of those. He's not very good against Visage because it's hard to get your channel off when the birds mm -hmm. are near you. They can stun. But he is a really good uh, hero against any form of carry. He can also nerf the mid lane really hard by just going in and enfeebling. So yep. you have your options open. I'm just surprised they would pick him over a hero like a Darkseer. Because I know it's the other hero I was tell like, talking to you about before we started this game. Where it's like Alchemist or Darkseer, like, like the bread and butter for LGD to play their style of gaming. And right now with the Alchemist combination too, Concoction into the VAC, it was what destroyed during uh, prelims with a couple of games that we were oh, yeah. casting. Uh, but they decided to pass that one up and Xiao Wei going with the next ban stage. He can't ban out all the support because there's no way you're going to be taking out both Chen as well as Enchantress, even if the Arcade is on the opposite side. Uh, but takes out against Loader. So banding up against Spectre, uh, banding up the Spectre instead of taking out S4 heroes. Yeah, just targeting down some carry heroes now that would be hard for him to deal with. And Alchemist is pretty strong as a carry because he peaks so early. But apparently they want to not play up against that Spectre. Also, the early Bane pick, it really comes back to a combination, of course, that you have with Alchemist. They can now pick up any hero and have a good set of free that can kill off pretty much anything with the Initiate Nightmare and then into a Concoction. Yeah. So, of course, Darks here, when you don't pick him up early, you will see him be banned out by S4. Yeah. And that's no surprise, really. Yeah, it's the combination. You just don't want to risk it. So easy enough just to ban it out. That's why that, that Bane pick up, I'm wondering if this is for like a greater strat which is supposed to be coming up as opposed to like going for the, the, the strats which have been working for a lot of the teams so far throughout the competition. Naga Siren, speaking of someone who's been working a lot, like a lot of hard work for this Naga Siren. Especially alongside the Visage, so gonna be banned out so they don't get that combination of two heroes that are really hard to kill and deal a lot of damage as supporters. Mm -hmm. So gonna be... Interesting to see what S4 wants to go for now, if he's going to secure up that second support, or if he's going to head over to Loda's hero, maybe, or even S4's. Surprising that S4 wished to remove out the, uh, the Anti-Mage. When you've already got the Alchemist on the field, like we know Sila really enjoys playing it. Obviously, anything with money is uh, <laughs> great for Sila. But they take out the Anti-Mage. Yeah, so they're, they're it, is, it, is it trying to tell us, like, Xiao Wei, maybe thinking about taking towards the middle lane? We get good yeah. Mimana uh, coming up for Alliance. So now they've got Coddle and Visage. This is, I know, I know through the, through the preliminaries, I was begging for this combination. We never got it in the aggressive tri lane. Now, this looks to be exactly that. Coddle and Visage to head down south. You were begging for anything with Keeper of Light, Toby. Of course, I want mana. <laughs> Jesus. Well... Yeah, this could be very well a uh, solo mid Alchemist, but now with the Magnus picked up, and that is a hero that both Xiao Wei and Yao, mm -hmm. especially Yao, yeah. play really well. We've even seen them modify their lanes up a little bit so Yao can actually take it to the solo mid. Yao has played solo mid in the preliminaries as well, yeah, with uh, Magnus as well. So uh, because of his Magnus being so good, but Magnus not being as good on the off lane anymore, mm -hmm. he will just head into mid lane. Yeah. That's a really dangerous hero to have up against the current Alliance lineup. And uh, they're going to go with uh, the wonderful combo Mi that makes everybody reception. happy. <laughs> this, is, this is the equivalent of what uh, Naga Siren uh, used to be. But this is, this is now Alliance. You look at their lineup and say, very risky if they get caught out by a Mag RP. You could lose your entire team. You've got a Mag RP into an Alchemist who doesn't even need to buy a Battle Fury. They'll just give him in the Empower buff up and he can just clean up all of Alliance. So LGD Gaming, they've got the skills to pay the bills as far as holding Alliance out. The biggest problem LGD are going to have is the split push that will come from Alliance. The never-ending wave of Phantom Lancers and then Prophet. You know Admiral Bull is going to be picking off your Tier 2, Tier 3 or Raxes if you try and go for a full man push. So if LGD were really thinking about going in for the full team fight, then they've got to do it early. They cannot let this game really get past that 30-35 minute mark. Yeah, LGD picking up a lot of stunts now, adding up at Nyx as well. But I really want to connect back to what was said in the Alliance video before as well. They said that pickoffs is one thing, but it's really about winning that big team fight. Yep. And with Alliance lineup, they can really move across the map so fast that suddenly they can be five where the enemy is only three. And this means that LGD will have a hard time moving across the map. But Nyx is a great pickup here. And Alchemist, as you say, 
that Empower buff with an Alchemist out farming the PL, he could really kill off the PL. <laughs> well, they take out the OD as the last ban here from S4. So Zhao Wei in the last ban as well. Alliance, they are only missing the S4 solo mid hero. And they believe it could have <laughs> definitely beat the Timbersaw. I wouldn't have put it past him as well. A little bit of a... <laughs> I don't know if <laughs> it's... It's looks like, yeah. It's like, damn it. It would have been beautiful with a Keeper of Light in your team as well to play that hero, of course. It's, uh, it's something that S4 loves to play mid, the Timbersaw. It really started to trend just the weeks before TI3, and it's been really effective in the group stages. I'm wondering if S4 will now go for a little bit more of the squishy mids. Like, you've still got the RP available. If that hits, he's still going to be like, in a little bit of trouble. But Puck up against the Alchemist is the first thing that's coming to mind. It looks like Alliance have already made the decision right now. They're sitting back down at their chairs, so they're ready to go. So S4 could just be counting down the clock, let LGD sweat it out a little bit more. But I would say Puck or Quap will be the first things that will come to mind here for the Alliance. And they say no! They go clockwork here as their next pickup and their final pickup as well. And that should definitely be S4 on the clockwork. Yep. So clockwork to go up against what they assume to be a Magnus in the middle lane. And yeah. it will be the easy assumption. Yeah, and that's also a really good lane for clockwork. Even if there's an Alchemist or a Magnus mid, doesn't really matter too much. You have the cogs, you can push in mana burn. And clockwork does really well against any melee mid. He is a little bit weak against Queen and heroes like that, but... Xiaowei now has to decide what he wants to pick up as his last hero. I'm wondering if he's even considering switching around his lanes. You're up against a clock in the mid, maybe you can get something else that might be a little bit more effective, but then again, how can he be really effective you, up against cog pushback? You don't want to change around too much though, because you have an overall idea and you picked already 80% of your heroes, so switching your lanes and trying to do something different in the last second is uh, always going to be hard, so clockwork is a problematic for, uh, pick for them. But they have a Bane, he could come in and Enfeeble, that makes the laning mid a lot easier, as I said. Yeah. And they don't have to panic too much about this pick, I feel. I suppose the biggest problem right now for that mid solo Magnus, if it does end up being that, is once the man is out, uh, if he has a bottle up and running by that time, then it won't be too much of a bad thing, because you'll still be able to throw out your shockwaves from the range. It was like when, when uh, Magnus was still being played as, as an offlaner, when his skewer got nerfed, obviously it wasn't as great. Shall and uh, Beastmaster, it is going to be a Beastmaster on Shall Shall Beastmaster. This is, to me, the best Beastmaster in the world, hands down. Oh, yeah. He oh, plays yeah. it really beautifully. And I, I remember the, uh, the fun times when I was casting the G League and uh, his Beastmaster rotations. He was one of those guys, the second he left the middle lane, you would want to call him because a second later, he'll be appearing on a lane and change the balance of the entire map just from that quick rotation. Yeah, and the heroes that we see now, of course, Yao playing Magnus and Xiao Wei on Beastmaster. I really think that Beastmaster should be one to head off to a long lane here. But let's see how they do it. Let's take into the game, Toby. That we shall, man. So let's run through our lineup and where our players will be heading off to. Obviously, S4 will be playing up as the Clockwork Goblin. He is built for that mid solo. Just a couple of a couple of consumables on him to get him through the early stages of the game. But he will be heading towards that mid solo for the bottle. That puts our loader PL on the top lane. So looking to make more loaders, and RK will be helping him out as the keeper of the light. EGM supporting on the Visage, and that leaves Admiral Bulldog as the final player back at base, and he'll be taking up the role and they just profit either long lane or jungle, the choice belongs to him. As far as LGD goes, Zhao Wei is that Beastmaster. Also built for the uh, for the middle lane. Stout Shield to start with a couple of Tangos. So maybe he will end up there. Actually, Yao, no, he is definitely built for the mid lane. Uh, we've got Stout Shield on Zhao Wei, so I thought maybe, but no. We've got Yao, who's only got a set of Tangos and is definitely looking for that bottle very early on. Silo wants nothing but farm. There's the Alchemist and plus DDC Bane, and that leaves Diddy as our last player and he will be the Nyx assassin. Yeah, and just looking at the movement from uh, from Alliance and how they want to counter LGD's lineup, already seeing some interesting just positioning. Well, they've already put down one board to just watch that ancient stack. Yeah. But it's like they're trying to wait for someone to just basically go through this little path right here the and then <laughs> that's the plan. That's the plan, but I don't know if Xiao Wei will even want to try and check out the rune. And it is going to be Xiao Wei off lane. So he's put that Beastmaster on the off lane, and Yao will be taking that mag into the middle lane. Yeah. And we see DDC picking up a nice rune there to start the game. Always convenient, especially when there's Treants like this. He can kill them off with his DD rune, so it becomes a lot stronger. 
Makes it a lot harder as well for Nature's Prophet to get that initial pull. He's already sent one tree, which is already dying, and now he's like, okay, well, DD's there. The stun from DD as well. So DD sees damage, DD stun, and these treants will not survive long enough to get a pull. But what he is doing is keeping it alive just long enough that it's probably going to make a double stack and at least pull the, uh, the creep wave in range for experience for Admiral Bulldog. Yeah, I'm just watching his middle lane right now because the first no, two creep waves expect. are really important for the Clockwork and Magnus. Who gets the upper hand? Yeah, if he manages to dodge or if he's gonna get pushed like this and lose his mana. Yeah, and it's something which Yao can't really, like, he, he can't wait for it to happen. Like, he has to use the shockwave, he has to stay in close on S4. This is the only way he's gonna get last hits. Without it, it's just yeah. not gonna work. And he got uh, his bottle already though, so doing really good for himself. Having that pool regen in the beginning helps out a little bit. The beauty of Bottle Rush, but Yell has nothing. Looks like he got hit by a secondary cock as he went in, so he's already been burnt three times here in the middle lane. A lot of creeps coming in for Xiao Eight on top. Yeah. I wonder how he managed to get all these creeps coming his way. Yeah, normally Alliance is very good at the creep control. Yeah, to, they, to the point where they don't even let the creeps come through, is, they'll always pull through. This is actually really huge, giving away this many creeps to an offlaner who doesn't have the Ancients. They took the time to block off the Ancients and then he actually is level two and a half now, so doing really good. Yeah, even managed to find two last hits. S4 and Yao playing around here in the middle lane. Yao, well, he has a skewer available, and S4, very good positioning too. Managed to stay on the back tail of the Magnus. Didn't get in front of him out of fear of being pulled into that tier one tower. Yeah. Yao just immediately bottle running, even though it's uh, about to spawn to the second rune. He knows that a Treant is controlling the bottom one, and it does spawn there. And that means protected for S4. And he's going to need that rune too. Cops a little bit of damage at the end, and uh, well, is anyone going to move here from DDC? It's actually quite risky to do so. In fact, they've just uh, denied up the room with a tree. Not going to go for it. Meanwhile, top lane, RK going to go with the Illumina. EGM, he's already used his slowdown, but he's got a big soul assumption chained up, and nope, not enough damage to kill off Xiao Wei in the top. And he rushed boots very early, so he already has them. And he has a lot of regen, but decides to go base anyway because his mana is low. <laughs> no need to risk his own life. And S4 again with Yao. Yao with actually, whoo, attempting, attempting. This, this is the lane which can just basically erupt, so we want to keep our eyes very, very close on it. Because the second that skewer lands, the second S4 is pulled out of position, he's right next to Yao as well, so he can't use the cogs just to escape. He has to go into a battery assault, he has to basically fight Yao very, very closely. And Yao, while he got burned up pretty early on, he's done a very good job of evasion since then. Yeah, he has. And those stats were pretty interesting as well, seeing Xyla, he has played it three times, it was uh, banned out 11 times in the prelims, and his average GPM, was it 726? That's pretty high. And it's he not, does, it's he not does have hero. free farm this game, and when you mm -hmm. have free farm on Alchemist against a free farming PL, the thing is that you have a much earlier timing window. You, be, you become a beast around the 20 minute mark, 25 minutes you can have so many items on the Alchemist, whereas PL, he doesn't really have enough to team fight. Yeah, P PL's a different kind of timing. PL's one of these guys where when he starts to replicate himself, level 16 is his most important thing. Get those three points up in the ulti, the three points up as well in but basically everything you need. But the main thing is the juxtapose because then you just start pushing out with more and more of yourself. So you need more time as a PL and that space has to be made by your support. So S4's impact on this game has to be big for Lodo to have that kind of space. And normally that's also what Nature's Prophet's looking for. But Nature's Prophet, very low on levels actually. He's only level two. Two. He tried to deny LGD as much as possible in the offlane, but he didn't manage to do so too well. We see already level 4 on this Nyx, that's really high level for our Nyx on support. And DDC, of course, he's leaving more experience towards the Nyx, so he's level 2. This is, uh, this is really dangerous, because there's no presence from Admiral Bulldog now. Like, RK, I think, is trying to help him flash farm, but he's also taking a lot of this experience as well. So it's... You could say that LGD are a little bit more in the driver's seat because they have the early power in this game. There's a Peel and a Furion that didn't have too good of an early game now, but yeah. look at his gold, man. He's up to 800 gold, he has the gloves, he's gonna hit pretty early Midas and he will start to catch up. We yeah. know, we've seen it so many times before, Furion's just surging back into the game. It's just when he hits that window. Yeah. Also notice in middle lane too, uh, Yao is basically level 6 now. 
So now we add the RP into the mix, and that's something which S Force could be really careful about. So far, he's been really good about dodging and staying out of the front of Yao, or being basically on the radiant side of Yao. And uh, now Yao could just turn around, RP him in, and then skewer him back out again. So yeah. S Force positioning is really going to be a hundred percent on the money. Needs to hit more mana though, because he uses all his mana all the time to just CS. But he's doing really good. It's 29 for 8 and uh, 24 for 4 on the mid lane. So Yao a little bit behind, but he should really not be winning the mid. So it's both players playing uh, really good here. It's almost like the, we're just looking at respect from both teams here. Like oh, yeah. we, we, hit, we hit over almost six minutes into the game right now, and both teams, they don't want to go massively over-aggressive, because to do such a thing, you're here in a best of three, you go one game down here, and then if you lose this matchup, you have the chance of, you have to actually play through the lower bracket, and that's two best of ones that you will be facing. Yeah. And no team here, no team ever wants to have a best of one to decide their, their position here at the International. Oh man, that's one of the hardest things to go up in. And Loda, he does love going for Midas, but in this game it seems he will not be doing so, and I feel that would be way too risky as well. Well, Sile has gone for his Midas, already fully up and running. So this is going to be a lot of quick experience coming his way, and quick gold. He is maxing stun, even though he has this complete free farm, so he wants to still be strong in case something happens. And I believe that's more a reactive thing, because he's not going to leave this free farm anytime soon. So just having all those points in stun, I feel maybe... I, I think he's waiting, for Alliance. he's waiting for Alliance to rotate down. When they start pushing at this tier 1 tower, then Alliance will come to stop him. You know, Keeper of the Light, Arke, is going to be one of the first ones to get himself in there. You know it's going to happen, because oh, yeah. it's, it's exactly what like, happens time and time again in so many different games. Coddle comes in, the counter push is there, and that's when DD, he's not level 6 just yet, he's sitting just below level 5, but if he has Vendetta up and running when Coddle TP's in, because Coddle will TP into this tier 2 tower here, and then just try and cast Illuminant from this direction here, and that's when he can have the Nyx attack from around the corner. Yeah, and Coddle is farming up a lot of stacks in the jungle now, so he's probably going to hit level 5 before they push tower which means that his blast is going to be really strong. It's almost going to kill off the wave immediately. Yow. I'm still waiting for this RP to happen, but S4, every time he does this, he makes it impossible. Yeah, before Push. there's any more movement towards the mid, I doubt that there will be a real engagement. Oh, we've at least got some uh, new item up for EGM. Of course, it's the only item he, he owns right now. This Medallion of Courage is his first item. The only other thing he owns is a salve. Yeah. Golgraph actually going the way of Alliance despite an Alchemist free farming. This is probably because a lot of the stacks which have been happening. It's amazing how much Arke as well as Admiral Bullock, every time I've looked into the jungle, it's either been a two stack or a three stack, or at least a very quick, efficient farming from them. And then you get Lotus free, free time on this top lane. It's very, very difficult. Like, here we go again. The pullover from EGM to a double stack. Wild Wings as well as Centaurs. They're always making the most out of the money. It almost gives you flashbacks to DreamHack Winter last year. <laughs> yeah, nice flashbacks. That's but not that's a nice flashback, of actually. <laughs> a Maybe it is for different. Alliance when they win. Yeah, <laughs> Alliance would like that. But Loda actually outfarming uh, Sila right now in terms of CS, but Sila has a big creep wave coming in here into the tower, so they're basically even. Yeah, and when you when you have Greevil's Greed, you can never say like Loda can be out farming even with only a level two. The bonus goal is not amazing, but it's still bonus gold. Yeah, he has 600 more net worth right now, even with lower CS. So that's the Goblin's Greed or Greevil's Greed. But he's going for a real fighter build. I expect he will just pick up a Shadow Blade and upgraded boots, and then just start fighting a lot, so he's not going to go for a full greedy style play. They want to really control the game. Something else we should probably note is the levels up on the Beastmaster. We've got an offlane Beastmaster. Obviously, he didn't have the same option as Admiral Bulldog of just abandoning using trees to tank up the creep wave and then just farming, inside, uh, farming up the jungle, where on the top lane, tanking up the creep wave was Xiao Wei. And Xiao Wei almost hits level 6, but now the push comes from, uh, from Alliance. They want this T1 tower, and there's very little that LGD can do to stop him. Yeah, the in fact, if they do, S4 is already waiting to kill. It's the same timing for bottom as well, so we see Sila just pushing with acid spray as well. There's so your Coddle TP in. Basically, a, just a trade, but Sai Ake, can he stop this? Well, look how defensive he's being. Around the corners, into the tree line, and that means to gank him up, he has to, they have to go very, very deep and also put themselves in a very risky position where Alliance can capitalize if they try and come around the corner. He's and, oh! And the first one to do it! And the first one to do it! S4 gets the first blood. DD won't let him out of here, though. 
around the corner, and then they find him. Is there an extra stun? There's nothing. S4 gets away to safety, and Magnus has gone down. Uh, good start there for Alliance. Also big to get a kill on Magnus anytime. Like, he's always going to be saving up for that blink dagger, so kills on him. You always know he's going to lose the maximum amount of gold. I'd give a shout out to all the fans. <laughs> DDC was thinking about RK on the bottom lane. But now he has to back himself out. With the haste rune, though, he can dive in pretty freely. But RK is getting everything he wants now. Tranquil boots are down. He's even going to de warn up LGD. And that's when Alliance is now going to try and back LGD into a corner. They realize they already managed to hit up nicely on that middle lane. But at the same time, Sila picks up a full Shadow Blade. So ganking, yeah. roaming. The plates can still come the way of LGD. They could be the initiators here. Yeah, it could be 11 minutes in. He's going to have his Midas now in Shadow Blade and just. Most likely just uh, S4 lashed up on DDC. Familiars are coming as well. Nightmare from DDC trying to save him. Won't work. The stun will still fly. Versage is the one to get the kill on the Bane. Nice combination. Just hooking in and blasting it. Aki is so high level. level Only level 2 on Illuminate, but he has 3 points in Chakra Magic, so he can always do it. And Lotus is getting so much more space on this top lane. Are they going to go again here? Very difficult to kill off Sila when all you got all you got is a coddle as well as a clockwork. But with them doing this, so Visage is happy enough to solo lane a Magnus. A Magnus can't find an opening until he gets that blink dagger up and running. Yeah, and that's a lot of levels going the way of EGM. He just Radiant headed into mid lane just a few attack. minutes ago and he was level six, now he's level eight. So getting really strong in that visage. Even starting up in his defensive abilities too, as well as having the four points Radiant up in soul assumption. Yeah. He does a hell of a lot of damage. Having Medallion and Chainmail, he's going into the mech, so surprised to see that they're not going to build mech on the Keeper of the Light, but it's just how uh, Ake and EGM are playing. EGM is the more item-based support, playing yeah. the fourth role. And by him going that, it means uh, Admiral Bulldog can focus on his split pushing items and maybe his initiation. So Scythe of Vias, we look for the, uh, maybe even going into a Desolator if he's thinking about bringing down towers a little bit faster. But more than likely we'll be looking towards that Hex. Yeah. And they are prepping themselves up. It already looks like they want to go in for Rosh. And with the, with the supports of, uh, of the Triants, they've already got the tanks, they've got the Medallion, so it shouldn't be too difficult to bring him down. Yeah, they will go at it, and meanwhile we see another push coming bottom, but with Ake always staying nearby, he can just blast this over and over. So even with this big of a push, Keeper of Light just makes it so hard. So every time you want to try and stop him, that Illuminate range is really, really good for him. Just can't get in close. Looks like LGD, they want to get themselves in and stop this Roshan from happening. The Hawk scattered out from Xiao Wei and Deep Ward battle. Not going to work now. The Roar and Admiral Bulldog with the Illuminate hits on three. S4 jumping in through the rear. The Cogs will all DDC out. This Admiral Bulldog skewered on down. He will be the first one to fall. Buys back straight to the game. Familiar damage on a Yao. RP will be popped, but it will not be enough. There's no follow up to it. And the Prophet, after TPing himself back in again, Sila locked him, but Shadow Blades away. They won't be able to find him. Gone east is DD on 54 life points. West is Sila. And back to base is Xiao. Yeah, no more true sight available there, so he survives. But this will be a Roshan going the way of Alliance. And a big fight for them. That it was, man. It did cost them, but they get the return. They get the kills back. Obviously, Admiral Bulldog's buying back is never a great thing, but he did it. it and they get Roshan, this, they secure the Aegis. This early on, the buyback is only part of their power. It's like you use it. It's a tool, so... Four staff now, finished up on Clockwork. Mm -hmm. So the combinations of items that will appear for Alliance, even Diffuser Blade, basically finished up on Loader. So we're going to have to add Mana Burn as well as that Diffusal Purge coming yeah. out during the next team fight. Need to see if they're going to start doing combinations with Alchemist and uh, Nyx Assassin just starting to roam. But they need to hit that Blink Dagger and they do have it now. Yeah. So immediately going to go with that. Yeah, they're going to try and smoke up. I think Sila realized he's in a little bit of trouble down here. And, uh, well, with Observers and Sentries down for Alliance, they will see this, this smoke coming in. But they're committing a lot more play people to this bottom lane. We've got Clockwork, s falls on his way down. A little bit further back is going to be EGM. But in comes the rest of LGD. And as these wards right here, they're going to basically, well, spring the trap and load her. Well, Loader. on the edge of the vision, they can see him. He sees them and still he walks out like that. He has the Aegis, so he's just trying to get him to go on him. 
course. And now they throw their own sentry wards, and yeah, LGD realize. LGD realize they've been watched the entire time. And Alliance will just back themselves up and see if LGD really want to risk initiating it any further. Because right now, they're they have all five of their players on this bottom lane, while Admiral Bulldog still finding money inside the jungle. Exactly, that's the thing with Fjorn. He can always be farming as soon as the fight starts. That's when you head into it. You don't waste any time on this hero, and that's why Bulldog plays it so well. The beauty of Prophet. Everywhere and everywhere, man. Nice little room for Yao, able to snipe up the DD. He's also got some really good levels. Like, we get the Blink Dagger, we get the Arcane Boots up. 15 minutes in, Yao's 100% on time as far as his items should be. And then you've got, like, the DD Rune to boot, and he's gonna, and he's gonna give the Empower over to Syla. And Syla, with a net worth of 8 point, oh, basically 8.4k gold up on him. Well outstripping that Phantom Lancer. Of course, PL with the Lance can still make Silas' life very, very difficult. In fact, they're already doing that. Sentry Wars down from the Dire side. They want to know underneath the tower. Double stun. Nicely done with a prop low, but way too much damage. Clears it up as Xiao Wei really caught in the corner. And Sila just wants to back himself out this one. The Blink away. The Courier. No! The Sprout gives him the vision, but they cannot catch up to it. Three yeah. players lost from LGD. This that didn't even look like Alliance broke a sweat. No, it didn't. They didn't lose the Aegis, didn't lose any hero. The damage wasn't even really there. And Mech now finished out on EGM as well. Gonna be sent out, so this push can even continue. And a can of Alliance is, is just showing up the golden experience graph, and it's just going downhill for LGD. And perfectly the way of Alliance. Yeah. And load up. Alliance were so patient as well. They stayed down there with four heroes for such a long time, just forcing the entire of LGD to be there mm -hmm. while Alliance were farming up, and that put. LGD in a weird pressured spot. Oh, we got a blink skewer. He managed to get the real loader as well. Can they kill him off? Yes, they do. But Aegis the immortal. You know, goes in. S4. Big deep dive. Fiend's grip holds him there. Silent with a stun. RP still going to be used here. And the shockwave out. Yao. Soul Assumption will kill him off. So it's a one for one trade. They keep on Bulldog. going. Admiral Bulldog a little bit too deep in. Has to retreat out. The Shadow Blade helps him. The Dust will not. And Loader now double stun from DD. Follow nice. up from Sila. One and now two. Triple kill for Sila. The Familiars will back him out of here. Oh, the bird. Oh, I can't get him. This is LGD now saying, well, Alliance take a fight on top of the T1 tower, but if you want to keep on pushing, you think you're enough to bring this down, expect casualties. A beautiful fight from LGD. Even though they lost three themselves, they got four kills and Alliance were already ahead. And we always talk about how much more it's worth to kill someone when you're behind. You get much more experience. Yeah. Well, that was sitting at, well, almost 10,000 experience advantage for Alliance. And this after an update is probably going to get itself a little bit closer towards that 7,500. Also a time they get to just recover a little bit on the map now, farming up mid lane and so on. Mm -hmm. It's just worth so much getting map control back. But that was Alliance just being a little bit too brave in how deep they dived. Especially with Loda running in after to save uh, or help Bulldog there. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta leave him for dead. Haste room for Yao now. So even better room for chasing. Harder for, for anybody to really like get a better position. And once that, once you do see that RP come back off cooldown in 20 seconds time, we'll see the combination and LGD. Looks like they got themselves a little bit of an issue here. Yeah, need a pause, probably something technical going on with one of their PCs. Yeah, looks like it's just down there with uh, Silas PC, but the Valve staff members are on it. But man, so far into this game, LGD, I, I kind of felt like when we're looking at, like, the kill count really wasn't looking that great for him. We're going to go oh, again. Wait, already that going. Alliance had a huge advantage at the very, very start of this game. But that last fight, like, for all the Chinese tuning in, like, you've got to have a lot more hope that's just kindled here for LGD oh, on that last fight. This game is really, like, open still. This 3-0 and 2 on Sila. He has been farming. So he's going to get really strong 3.8k gold Ooh. now. 4,000. So, I and mean, do we just see him go into a Radiance build? Is that what we're thinking right now? Is it going to be no. like full on fight, AC, Basher, Abyssal? I, I would really more expect him to go for something that has like AC, he needs high attack speed, and the Miner's Armor could be really nice. Mm -hmm. But even something like a Mjolnir is nice against the PL. He is going to have the Empower, and with Rage, he's going to hit like a truck. That yeah. much is for certain. That's true. Unless you subscribe to the Book of Harney, uh, and the Book of Harney basically says attack the real PL. Attack the real PL. Is that's, that, that's the is target, that man. That's the Book of Hani. That's the Book of Hani. <laughs> yeah, but it's very easy if you have Empower and Maelstrom. You kind of kill everything at once. Mm -hmm. 
just later on in the game once that heart comes so, up. He did go for the BKB, of course. He has shown it to uh, Alliance already, walking up to his mid lane. Got a little bit of smoke movement here from LGD, and they're going to find S4 on the bottom river. Mana burn, hold, raw axes. Very easy pick off for LGD. Didn't have to use the Fiend script as well, so they are not confident around mid lane. In fact, they're going to go in deeper. They find a couple of birds. Yeah. Probably don't want to overextend too much as Alliance gave them that favor earlier on. Uh, this is all meant to be security for the T1 tower in mid. And Yao, well, there goes your hate root. RP, he's going to pull RK back. Yo, ho, 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 ow! Second take. Now he brings it back right. Two heroes down. Clockwork going to buy it back. S4 misses on the ultimate. He could have split them in twine. Not going to happen now. Yao wait. The cops oh, push, push him out. And that'll stop him. And brings him down. Loaded to take the kill. Wow, what is it? What a nice time to discipline cancel there on his uh, skewer. No failed skewer by Yao. But again, we see another buyback from Alliance to try and turn the tides of these fights. That, that wasn't even trade. That was LGD's trade right there. And that's but why Alliance is already trying to take out this T1 tower in the mid to balance it out. Looking at Alliance, though, they buy back. They know that their RP is down. They're going to just push mid tower. They got it already. Like, this is them understanding. Oh, look at Sila. There's already got a sentry wall. They can see him. There's no way he really wants to follow into this. He's just back to the lane to farm. And there's a lot of money still there for him. Yeah, they want to really keep spreading out Bulldog and uh, Loda as much as possible. We can always see they're going to be on one part of the map each. And what do we have for Loda flying out? It's a Yasha. So he has his Yasha, Diffusal, Drums, Vit Booster, and Tranquils. For 21 minutes, he's really farmed. Oh, yeah. And he's going to get bigger and bigger. I was talking about that level 16 man before you get like these unstoppable pushes. That's why when you get like the Manda and the Heart up and running, you, you just can't stop the army of PLs unless you commit strongly. But then again, I really like LGD's lineup against that. You've got access to clear. You've even got a Nyx stun if you really need it. You've got the Empower buff up as well. So that's going to give cleave for both the Magnus as well as the Beastmaster. So you put all of these things together and it makes it as a way of dealing with the PL no matter what stage of the game we end up in, be it very late or not. Yeah, definitely. And Yasha is also a very good just farming component for Loda as he picked it up. It's not all about the Manta style as well, it's just the agility and movement speed is so nice for farming. EGM doing a very good job, trying to be the master of the wing strat. His burn's best. Yeah, Familiar is obviously stronger than Hawks. Yeah, Unless they are going to sack the mid tower though. Yeah. There was no reason to fight it. When you know Blink and RP's back up again, and Beastmaster all the cooldown is not really that long, they've still got Fiend's Grip, there's too many controlling abilities from LGD when they've already established themselves around the Tier 1 tower. Yeah, they respect LGD for being stronger right now. They have the RP and all their combination. So many stuns from this team. It's basically a pretty much a TI2 team, I would say. Like, uh, looking at the heroes, we saw a lot of these type of picks where we had five different stun heroes. Mm -hmm. Looking over to Alliance, we have one guy with a stun. Interesting build to come off from Admiral, Admiral Bulldog. I don't know if you see him. He's going in for an Orchid as far as his first item goes. When you've already got an Alchem, so he's not going to stop in when the BKB comes up. And if Magnus, who is in fact now building into it, there will also be a BKB up on Yao. So the only person he can basically control right now is the mech running Beastmaster, or at least the mech trying oh, to build to Beastmaster. They can control DDC. That's the thing. If they TP in behind with uh, Furin or Nature's Prophet, it's always very easy for him to just click Orchid on Bane. Mm -hmm. And if he can just do that, already he's done a big impact in that fight. And then he just starts right clicking off someone. He can even kill someone else before he kills the Bane if he wants to. Mm -hmm. But just doing something like that is so huge. So I like the choice to go for it. Oh. LGD are going blind on the map right now, depending on how far EGM can take these uh, Hawks out. Because he's got himself a gem, so he's checking all the high grounds, all the low grounds, anywhere he can find it. Yeah. And those two Sila, man, this net worth is getting out of control for Alliance. Like, oh. he's, got, he's got another 2700 gold after already having the plate mail. He's basically a recipe away from the full Assault Cuirass. And this is going to come up not at the same time as Roshan because he has already respawned. So both teams will be looking towards this. But if they give Silence a, a couple more seconds, um, obviously with Greeble's Greed, level 4, it's not going to take long for him to hit not only that level 16, but also having enough money for the full AC. Yeah, when he has Assault Cuirass, he can take down the Tier 1 and Tier 2 towers all over the map. But I want to look over to Alliance right now and see that actually Bulldog has higher net worth than Loda. So this is how much he uh, gets Yow. on that ultimate. Yow. This is the fear of fighting up against PLs. Yeah. He's not even replicating. Now it's just the original wave of PLs that were there that just burned off every single bit of mana he had. 
Oh yeah, it's he can't really fight these illusions for much longer. Oh. And oh. those are upgraded diffusals, by the way, so they really burn a lot of mana. Hawks are being sniped off. Loader's running interference right now, trying to deward with nothing but illusions, while the boar is trying to deward. Boar's not faster than PL illusions. So the sentry vision still goes to Alliance, and they take a second. Roshan. Yeah. That's a lot of control, having Roshan. Oh, it's four! He found DD, jumped in, but the follow-up's done. The acid spray, the roar as well from Beastmaster. DD, the cogs have to wait a little bit longer. They get the stun, the Beastmaster acts as S4. He's still alive through this. Zhao Wei wants a TP out, can't get out in time. Sila pops the BKB and the Shadow Blade to bail. Alliance, S4. <laughs> That's aggressive play by S4, but it really pays off. He has to back up, so. And that is one hell of a hit from S4. And with these kills now, like, there's going to be more of them. He's building into Aghanims as his second item here. Okay, and he these are going to keep flying. Anyone. That makes it so scary for LDG. Alliance still have to be careful. Like, they can take a tier 2 tower right now. There should be no issue with this whatsoever. Like, Sala's not really going to get out there. He's got the AC up right now. But where they've got to be careful is when they try and push high ground. Up against RP, up against Toxic Spray, up against Beastmaster, up against Fiend's Grip. you got a lot of issues that will be coming your way. Deny. And nice deny by Sala. Very nice. So they lose the tower, but they still manage to deny most of the gold there. Yeah. This is just going to turn now into Alliance. There's a tier 2 tower in the bottom lane for them to focus on. And then the rest of it is just holding LGD in base and making sure PL is strong enough that they can just push straight in without any kind of risk to the main heroes. Yeah. I see a lot of gold on EGM again. He's heading into a secret shop, probably gonna purchase something. Well, we, we, we would assume he would go into that um, Aghanim Scepter, so point boost will be on his list, but what does he want to drop? He has the gem, so he doesn't really want to drop it. I imagine he will pass over the gem maybe to Loda if he didn't have the Aegis, but... And Rapport has got a slot for now, but yeah. who, who takes it later? You can give it to the Keeper of the Light, but also look at Arke's gold. He's almost 2,000 up on him. Yeah, there's a lot of gold on the entire of Alliance right now. Everyone but Bulldog has 2,000 gold in the bank. Well, you can, you can understand it when you look at the gold graph and 12,000 being the advantage for Alliance and over the experience, over 12,000. Yeah, but you can think this way that they have about 12,000 gold advantage, but if they have 8,000 gold right now that they haven't spent, the advantage is not that huge yet. Yeah. The experience is there, of course, but before you spend your money, it's actually not coming into play, right? Mm. <laughs> it's actually kind of crazy when you're putting up the current gold. Yeah, four times 2,000 already up. Yeah. But, but they're heading into many big items, and we have a full staff just straight off the bat for Keeper of the Light. It's like Admiral Bulldog just spent his cash. Ultimate Orb, so he is still going to get that side of the vice. So we're double disabled to come out from come out from Bulldog. The Silence and the Amplify Plus have been the side of the vice. Yeah, and he's the supporters is the bigger thing I feel from Alliance that they have so much more items than DDC and DD have mm -hmm. on uh, LGD because it makes them super hard to kill. Look at the vi armor on Visage. Of course, that's the first hit. The smoke. Yeah, they're looking for an opening. They might find, in fact, they do find EGM. The roar will go. Invis Rune, nice four stuff away by S4. Keeps EGM out of trouble. Stun as well, then the Prophet Sprout. It blocks him off. RP, skewer him back down again from Yao. Three, he caught in there, four stuff, but there will be the death there of RK. Then through and Sila opens up the can. And now they keep on going through. But Lone in the middle of the fight, Diffuser Blade up on DDC. He will go down. Familiars, there goes your lands, and that will get a kill. Double for Lone, but the stars. Huge stun from the Knicks Assassin. DD pulling it through. Follows up. Breaks down Admiral Bulldog. And they're running away from S4. They've already got what they want, but maybe they turn to fight. Look for the stun. It's a fake loader. Now there's more fake loaders. Familiar stun. Sila toss it. He's okay. The fusel blade out from loader. Slowing him down. Now into the chemical rage again. DD. He's trying to hold him up with a spike. Carapace Yao throws out a shockwave. EGM. He's got a lot of a soul assumption up his sleeve. Is it going to be enough? It will be enough. Clockwork, PL, they yes. all team up together. Wow, what, a, what an epic fight, really, LGD jumping in there with Magnus. He had no vision, I believe the Hawk was dead as he jumped up, and he just gets back. That really cost him, though, again. Again, Alliance, they're not fearful of having that buyback on cooldown. Visage and Clockwork, man. Oh, no, don't, they don't care about having cooldown and buyback this early. They use it any chance they get to just use it to win a fight. Mm -hmm. In the end, they did pull out a lot of kills from buybacking and just chasing down there. But 
that fight started so nice for LGD. If they weren't so far behind already, they would have really gotten some towers out of that. And Loder just got a lot harder to kill, and he's only died once as it is. The heart flies in on the courier. Yeah, and he has ages still. Even after that fight and so many people dying, his ages never got down because LGD, they said simply, okay, we don't focus you. You have ages, no point. Yeah. They're just waiting for it to tick out. And that'll be in one minute's time. Then they can, I don't know if they can breathe a little bit easier, but they can at least be a little bit happy about it. Because by that time too, we'll see Magnus with a full BKB. So he'll be able to move freely during these fights. Of course, DDC, no surprise, he doesn't really have much up his sleeve. Nick's Assassin as well. Not really the richest of heroes as far as supports go, uh, but still not too shabby. But when you look at the at the lowest support as far as net worth goes, RK is that. He's got Trank, he's got Force Boots. Uh, oh, EGM. Wonderful. RP into Raw, into Fiend's Grip. Wow. This is some serious commitment to kill off a support. Four ultis. Even the next ulti was used, so... But it's worth it because they sold the Alliance gem. Yeah. And that makes that a hell of a lot more worth it. Yeah, getting that gem is so good because there's a Shadow Blade on the Furion as well as the PL being in this, so... Mm -hmm. That's a big snipe. We also now, like, with that snug going off, now Alliance are fighting 4v5, so Sal feel a lot more free to move around the map. And now he also has his Basher up and running with his level 17. He is going to be cleaning up a hell of a lot more during these fights, and more importantly, we'll find a lot more lockdowns during the fight. I think that he's going to be really strong in the next fight because he has a lot of attack speed already, having Shadow Blade, Midas, Threads, and AC. And then he has to empower as well mm -hmm. as his basher. He's going to deal a lot of DPS. Yeah. And this Heart of Loader, he's going to need every single point of that life points if he wants to try and survive up against that. And what happens when the full Abyssal comes up from Sylar? And normally I'd say, well, maybe in like five minutes' time, but this is like Sylar on Alchemist. We'll see this in about two, three minutes. Yeah. The dangerous part for Alchemist, of course, is if he gets Hex first. And I say Hex, but there's of course not a Hex yet. Mm -hmm. But Bulldog, having his Orchid, almost has an entire Hex as well. Yeah. He was also one of the guys that didn't buy back during that last fight, which was very, very important. He needed to save up that money. It's almost like they're cycling through saying, we, your item is more important, I'll buy back so at least the team fight is controlled. And that's a lot of loader. Pushing straight down the mid. The Hold movement from LGD wants to look at the T1 tower on the top lane, though. And DD is having a bit of a wander around, seeing if he can find somebody out of position. And Admiral Bulldog's the only person he'll find, but he cannot uh, kill or initiate on him. Alliance saw Yao on the bottom lane, that's why they're heading in now. They want to catch, because Yao is not there yet. Yeah, Yao's going to be really, really careful. Sylar's going to take the tower fortification, try and slow him up, and Alliance looking for the pincer move. They see him mid again, so now they feel really... Mass TP's. Really sure about this. Mass TP's out. The tower's already gone, clockwork! And Ken S4 gets him, and he'll get up DD here. Or maybe he, it's going to take him a little bit long. Is he? No, Vendetta off cooldown. Off cooldown. He did this entry wards. Boy Scout is prepared, EGM. And Silo was also able to escape as well, deciding not to TP and just Shadow Blade himself away to safety. Oh, that's still really good, though, for LGD. They got the top tower, and that's, that's some nice goal going the way of Shao 8. And losing out their supporter, sure, it's never something you want, but mm -hmm. this Nyx, he doesn't really lose a lot. Yeah. He has level 11, so no key level close or anything. I kind of almost want to quote Loader right now. When I look at the goal graph and the experience graph, when you see it over 15,000 experience, and while the goal graph is arcing back up a little bit, it's not down a hell of a long way. And Admiral Bulldog, well, Yao, he's going to skewer, cancels up quickly. The Orc is being used. Hex up one, wants TP out. DDC will have to use his Fiend's Crypt and hold Admiral Bulldog in place. Meanwhile, up on the top lane, Sila with a BKB is manning up against all of Alliance, and the TP support is coming back. S4 got to bail out of here, puts down the cog. Sila will walk around it and see if he can get the concoction side off. Blinding Light forced him back, throws it up to Loader, and that's the real Loader getting stunned. For Stuff away, keeps him out to say the RP by Yao holds him in. Follow up stun again here by DD, and they're gonna beat down Loda Sila. Chemical Rage is worn off. EGM wants to turn around. Xiao Wei low on life. The cops from there for force him out. Loda, he's on 64 HP. Finally, DDC brings him down. They get S4 locked into RK. It's a nightmare of a situation. Drag back down, and this will be LGD walking over Alliance on totally the top lane. Totally crazy. Totally crazy. One team fight. That was the words of Loda. One team fight and you can win a game. Abyssal Blade now finished up. Vladimir's a lot of items coming the way of LGD. Look at how well they play in the team fights. Their combinations, their 
they're just above everything in this in this team fight. It was it was amazing, man. And DD, I almost want to give him like a like a semi man the match award. His stuns have been perfect. Finding two, the control from the supports from LGD have been absolutely phenomenal, and they buy the space for Sila to do his business. And Yao doesn't need five man RPs. Two caught out, three caught out. It's just LGD systematically moving through the alliance lineup. You know what's even more crazy about that fight? That was a fight without Alchemist having his BKB. <laughs> that was him just walking in and his team playing so well that he actually was allowed to right-click a lot. And he, and he even lost his uh, he even lost his chemical rage halfway through that fight as well. And Sila says hello to one of the familiars. Yeah, Roshan is up. Both teams know it. Yeah. Having a little poke. There's a cheese on that as well. This is dangerous for LGD to try. Like, a little with, bit, but with S4's jump in, the cogs are just split them up. With that rune, they really want to do something, but it's hard to just straight go and do Roshan. You could get caught out so hard. Yeah. And you never know 100% which target you're supposed to be initiating on. you got so many PLs on the map, and Lowe's doing such a great job of splitting them up too. They're split so many different ways. Yeah, he's, he's being a nuisance completely with these... Illusions. Are they going to give this a shot? That familiar is still watching. You see him watching just the sideline covers the edge of Roshan. So when the balls start to swing, they know what's going on. And Sila, well, well, wow. That's a wow. fast DPS, really. Wow. So Alliance have to do something. The familiars have already done their stun, and Sila wants to open up again. S4, he's going to jump in here. Oh, Sila! Blinding line! Needs a four stab. He's been pushed up. Somebody get him down. Somebody get him down. DD again with oh, the can't. extra stuns. Admiral Baldock's looking at DDC. And now DD, he'll go down the river. And Sila, all he can do is watch his teammates die. Yao is up here. Did he skewer? He skewered his teammate out to safety. That is one hell of a blinding light. Blink away. Sila runs back past the tower. Well, uh, RK just proved his worth. RK is just such a monster on some heroes. And now they will take Roshan. Cheese to Loda and Aegis on the deck. In fact, now Loda will take the Aegis. They decide to change their mind and S4 will take the cheese. Man. What a fight. That, what a light. What a light. That blinding light just gave me total nerd chills. Holy shit. RK is playing really, really well. Man, that is just, that's also one of those wrists. Blinding light, cogs, both would have pushed him back up there. I'm surprised he didn't just pop the BKB and ensure the Roshan kill before he could be controlled like that. It, it's not something you think about though, the blinding light. Like, he was probably thinking, okay, I won't probably get hexed right now. I'm gonna wait a little bit later. Because Roshan was about, wasn't really about to get last hit yet, sir. Mm -hmm. I think he was waiting just before Roshan dies, then BKB. So. Yeah. Look at Alliance. Instantly they know that fight was okay, but they still have PL on buyback, uh, buyback cooldown. They, they shouldn't be risking too much here. Like, the bottom tower was already gone. All out of towers for LGD are gone. But if they push up, RP wasn't used because LGD, that was just a horrible position for them. So they never even had the fight. Yeah. Yao was the one who saved Sila's life. And that was probably a bigger thing. The fact that Sila didn't go down then, he still sits around 23,000 net worth. The full Abyssal Blade is up and running. And he's got another 3k gold already inside his bank account. He is just spending money on anything he wants. Yeah. It was also such a nice move by Yao. He skewering up there to cut the trees so that Sila could actually get out. Yeah. But one thing that I look at Alliance and think that they need to do something about is that LGD, they have Vladimir's and they have Assault Curas, so there's a lot of armor amplification for their own team and also reducing five for the enemy. Whereas Alliance, they don't have the Vlads, they don't have an AC, yep. and that's why the right clicks are so powerful. Also having a Beastmaster in your team helps a lot. That DPS is getting high for LGD. It, it kind of just means that even if you have Aegis, even if you have Cheese, even if you win team fights, unless all of LGD is dead, Alliance won't be able to take a Rax. It's that simple. They have to win a team fight fully. DD's gonna move up here on the top lane. What he probably doesn't know is the fact that Visage has a gem. What he will probably know is that Visage isn't here. Ooh! Okay, they throw down Sentry Wars and they bring in Loader. That was just instinct. There's no vision here. No vision, just four staffs. Oh, blinding. now they can find S4. Now they do have vision. Again, the four staff evades the son of DD. They just cannot catch a break here, LGD, especially when there's more PLs pushing in that bottom lane. But Silas mopping up the mess. And that's still money, money, money. A lot of money. He can still get a lot stronger. He can get the travels and he can get one more item. Then he can even switch out to Shadow Blade as he hits that point. Alliance are coming. Alliance are coming through the top. They've already got Mana Star loaded, just trying to whittle away at this tower's life points. And they need to put Silent with Empower on the front lines. Yeah. 
Meanwhile, and that cleans it up quick. Meanwhile, we have Bulldog up to 5,000 gold on his Nature's Profit pushing bottom. Orchid, Shaifa Weiss, 5,000. We also just had the Aghanim set up for Clockwork complete. So just flew out to him then. So many items coming in for Reliance, and you'd think with a 14,000 advantage of gold, you should be able to buy out some good items. And that experience graph, that, that's a big spike. It's a big spike when LGD started getting control of this back again. DD realizes he is spotted on bottom lane. Nice center rewarding by Alliance. Creep started hitting him. That also means they know where to de-ward. That gem is still in the hands of the Beastmaster. So they can get rid of all these wards of Alliance. Just force Alliance to buy new ones. EGM has spent... Well, he's bought two gems. He has. So there's a lot of money to pull away from a hero. He is a rich support, though. He has Gold Scepter, he has Medallion, he has Mech. He never went for that Aghanims, though. Wow, look at the commitment from LGD. Prophet Ullman hurts as well, but they just popped the Mech charge. Top tower is dead. It will be, because they rotated four heroes yeah, down. Fortification and the quick TP back. Magnus is here. He's going to take that PL aggro, and in fact, he doesn't. In fact, Bash is up the PL illusion, and that means denial of the top tower. And they've got to keep vision up here, be it a sentry or just be a gem. Alliance is just slowly just playing with the map control they have because Furin is non stop farming. He has a BKB now as well. Mm -hmm. So they're just not rushing anything right now, keeping LGD on the back, back feet. Yeah. Well, they know they control this as well. Like, I'm talking about winning one team fight before. LGD, even if they win a team fight, they're going to get through a tier 2 and a tier 3 tower. And that's just one of the lanes. There's still the tier 1 tower alive on the bottom lane. And that's not something that really you want to be able to deal with. Like, you push in, you take a rank, and then you've got to stop. And you have to stop, because you haven't taken out the tier 2 towers, or tier 3s, which means the ranks are not exposed for damage. Exactly. There's a 5 tower advantage right now for Alliance. LGD only took 2 towers in this game, so it's really a hard position. Clockwork! Oh. Work. Long latch in, pushes Silo back, he's into the chemical rage, goes down the concoction, eats through, and then beats S4 down! Nice! Do not get involved in this one, they will lose the gem, but Silo goes for a double, bash again now, over on EGM, Silo. he's looking for more, but he's got too many PLs, Yao is here, RP holds EGM, but Silo. currently a piglet, the bottle's on the deck, and DD runs away, the roar out and bulldog, but the solar touch will get the kill, Silo turns, trying to clean, he knows he's dead, will buy back into this game, but Alliance will now pop the top, coming buybacks. through that Rax. I think they're just going to back out, double buyback, Alchemist and Magnus. They don't have RP and Chemical Rage on cooldown for 7 seconds time. But it does force Alliance to back up a little bit more. Alliance, what a beautiful silence on the Nyx as, or Nyx as he was walking in. And just dodging the RP with PL as well. Really clutch play. Yes. Well played by Silo, they're just crushing those cogs going in, killing off. The fight started amazingly for LGD. That's that power you can't deny, and uh, well, <laughs> it seems everybody just dropped everything in the middle of the fight, and PL will come in, a little fake one. So who gets the bottle? It is, in fact, uh, Yao picking up what he owns. And someone's going to take the gem, and Courier will do the job. <laughs> I think someone else wanted it. He flew yes. all, all the way across the map. He migrated just to the top lane to try and find that gem. Michael skills. <laughs> That's never getting it old, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, okay, let's let's start looking to the future here. Alliance, they're still winning team fights, but they're not taking racks. The, yeah. the the difference in, in time between when these fights happen and when the buyback comes off cooldown, it's a very very long time. I, I want to point out how big it is to force double buyback then and LGD not getting anything. Mm -hmm. That fight that they won top. It's almost as good as killing everyone and getting the Rex. It's, yep. it's almost that good to make the enemy buy back two heroes and get absolutely nothing for it. Because this late into a game, you don't want to have something like that. And now Nature's Prophet, he has a Demon Edge, he's going to buy the entire Daedalus, I believe. Or maybe save up buyback gold still. Yeah, yeah he has it ready, so ha he's going to having, having buyback gold seems to be something which you just cannot pass up in this game. Oh, not on Furion. You've no. got to have it. I'm wondering too when Salah buys his next item, like what position does he get himself into before he says, I need to make sure, okay, looks like he doesn't need to make sure of anything. He just goes straight in for the Monkey King bar and has a hundred gold left. It's he a full CD. buyout for this. He has to see the um, buyback and it's going to be MKB. Yep. So Bulldog doesn't have buyback right now either, but he's going to farm it up as soon as possible. I think that's also Yao's Oblivion staff back in base. He's building into a refresher all, but he's keeping it he's secret it. for as long as possible. Yep. He's hiding a refresher build. 
They're moving over and then, hello loader! Oh, not actually loader. Not really loader. No. Semi-loader. An impersonator. Loader has the gold for Butterfly now, but same thing there. He doesn't ha He hasn't really been forced to buy back now lately and he doesn't want to do it again, so... He's got to save the gold. Look at this move from LGD. He tried, they try to check out their entire jungle. Loader's not even there, but all of his, his illusions have left the camps completely barren. And fourth Roshan is going to spawn in just about one and a half minutes. It's preparation time. But the only preparation which is really required from Alliance is keeping that top lane pushed in, the mid lane pushed in. And Loader, who will actually be able to pick up his butterfly now. He has enough money to pick up the full butterfly up on that PL. And that's picked up right after Silas already picked up his Monkey King bar. So he knows exactly what that Monkey King bar was for. He wants to make sure every single PL and illusion goes down and goes down quickly. Yeah, and Silas' DPS in these fights is completely crazy with Empower. Without Empower, I don't feel that he would be that strong against PL, but in this game, it's, it's really potent to carry in the late game. The problem is that Bulldog is pretty much gear-capped on his Fury now. He's, he's getting to that point. Yeah, well, what else are you going to do? You got to sell your Shadow Blade for something else, but he kind of likes that for an escape mechanism. Kind of likes it, but he could be even more crazy in the DPS, yeah. yeah. And he could even help the PL by buying something like an Assault Cure Ass, but I think Daedalus would be a great choice too. I agree. He needs to have that DPS. You're already seeing teams walking around with a gem, while the movement speed and that bonus hit is really, really good. Having that straight up damage on an Aegis property, who's also got a BKB, opens up his uh, options for split pushing. I would almost say Desolator, but we're way, too, we're way too late in the game for the Desolator now. Yeah, Desolator at 46 minutes in is not a huge game changer. Yeah, he, he needs the full deeps and then having up with the, uh, with the crit. Is uh, this going to be LGD's time to go? I think it may be. Roshan is now S4. just 5, 10 seconds away from respawning. So they need a pick off, they need an opening here, LGD, so they can control up the pit. Yeah, S4 has had that cheese for 10 minutes, by the way. Which means we'll have a secondary cheese. Yeah, it's going to be a good cheese. And LGD, I'll have a wander around. We've got a couple of Dire Observer Wars. There is a Sentry Ward. At the same time, the Treants come down. Means they will be spotted. Yeah, and the gem will it. reveal it too. I don't know if, if LGD have the confidence to pick. Go. Yeah, they're going to try to pick this off really fast. Loader's still up on that top lane. But remember, with the Keeper of the Light, they can basically pull it out. Look how, how fast, fast can Sila get it? He has almost got it down. And a nice body block. block. Zhao Wei blocked him out. The hook didn't go in. Agassi Mons with Sila. Now the stun. It's for your life. is not forfeit. Four staff down. Out to safety. But Ab Admiral Bulldog, there's your RP, cleaving him up is Sila. Aegis will actually pump here, it's Clockwork Goblin with it. They come back to life again, Yao jumps out. Oh, Sila, Bulldog chases him. Yao's out to safety. Look at that damage. He'll hold him there, 2,000, and it's dropping quick into the Invis, but in range of the Tier 1 tower. He does take that fall. And top lane. The Rax almost died during this as well. Yao just in time. My correction on the call as well for the Aegis. <laughs> and that is now, well, three heroes in the sideline. But Alliance, I don't think they'll still have enough confidence to push straight back in again. Alchemist may be on the sidelines and buyback just ticks off cooldown. And he uses it instantly, doesn't even wait. There's a lot of money on that bottom lane for him to catch up anyway. Top Rax, oh. Agro is going to be pulled off by the creep spawning. Yeah, Someone needs to clean it still. It's the ping that came out from Bane just saying get up back up there and that's where Beastmaster's headed right now. The full butterfly on PL. Mm -hmm. I really feel that he needs to switch his boots now though as he's 48 minutes in. Yeah. When these boots break they are pretty much useless 25 movement speed so being fighting this long with Tranquils is really ineffective. But he wants to head into travels of course. I'll look at him try and hold. There's also a new gem that was just purchased up from the Alchemist for his team right here. And Sila, well, he'll clean up a lot of this. TD, this is not a really great time when the PL Illusions get in a little bit deeper there. And the Prophet Ultimate. It's a lot of splash damage and it's still a pushing out that damage. top lane as well. They're not even like getting themselves in any kind of issue here. They finally pick up that PL Illusion. Before it made more of itself. But that top lane's pushing in. The middle lane's pushing in with PLs. And Sila comes in here to clean it up. And the bottom lane's been pushed in by the remaining four players of Alliance. And Alliance are still in this position. In this game, they have to have perfect positioning in the fights. If they get caught out too much, if three of them get an RP, they will lose that fight. Mm -hmm. Even with buybacks, I think that would be really hard. So they have to be really careful. Yeah. Even with this advantage, you can't just walk in and expect to win.
Yeah, there's going to be safety first from Alliance, and they do bring all five players, even with a couple of PL losers on that top lane. It's been cleaned up. Sila will have to rotate back down the bottom lane, but there's no jump in or out just yet. But Yao, quite happy to show the fact he's walking around with the cheese on him. So and as for us, his cheese still. Yep, so we've got cheese on both sides, and we've got that BKB, and he's showing up his Oblivion stuff for 2,500 gold as well. So that, uh, that double RP really isn't that far away. The problem is, if he gets it, there'll be no buyback available. He's got to make the most out of that. If he goes down straight away, and S4 can do that, even see his positioning, looking for a better one, just to get that hook in. S4 is happy to throw his life away for this, because he knows Keeper of the Light, as long as he stands at the back lines, if you buy back, you're straight back in this fight. You don't need BTs in this for Alliance. No. And again, there's so much gold on Alliance. I mean, looking to your gold graph, it's about 20,000, but there's 4,000 gold on Loader, 4,000 gold on EGM. 3,000 gold on Admiral Bulldog and 1,000 on S4 as well. <laughs> so it's so much gold that they just have available for the buybacks. This is just... <laughs> EGM can almost buy up a straight Aghanims, but at this point I think even Shivas is better going into a Shivas card. We're going to rotation from Alliance. They're, yeah. they're moving off the bottom lane because they're still going to tower to push through down there. We're on the top lane. It's just... It's illusion spam. It's illusion spam into the racks. Yeah, this this racks is also really low on HP, so maybe they could just siege it. And that's the reason for the mana star illusions. Bring it down. Salah has to rotate up, but bit by bit, little by little, it's just chipping away at it. Find the weakness and then bring it down. But they've got to keep chipping faster. That racks will regenerate very very slowly, but it will regenerate nonetheless. And so. Silent it's easy to clean up these lanes. It's amazing how much money you're still getting from inside the base. Because they're taking... They, we're still with LGD farming up every single lane. Alliance aren't making the most out of any part of the jungle. They're trying to push in. But even then, they have a couple of issues with getting every single last tip. Because they can't be in all the lanes. We're looking at like a 4-1 kind of split. Loader's taking the majority of the money here. The bird's doing some evil damage to Arax already. Meanwhile, just push on every single lane, as you mentioned. They just want to keep LGD completely split. That's all this is. In fact, now they've just made so many copies that they're going to get a kill on the racks. It does go down. This is the reason why people hate PL. Yep, that's pretty much it. And he comes straight back in again. More of himself. Sila, he knows he can clean him up quickly, but he doesn't want to pop a chemical rage for nothing but illusions. Who's still killing off this range racks. They're yeah. going to finish it! The They're going to finish it! The creeps don't really kill it, he would have to go there, but he wants to pay attention to the other two lanes as well, so... They need to find a pick LGD really have, badly. LGD have to come out of their base. It's their only option right now. They have to come out of their base and find Alliance. But the second they do that, Alliance will know. Because every time, like every 5-10 seconds, there is something entering the base of LGD. Look at be, TD. Be it these illusions just searching out. They saw him. He's going. There goes your roll. S4 locked in. Fiend's grip on EGM. Holding him there. Skew it down. Where's your RP? Two to catch. Bulldog and EGM. And Sila opens up. He picks up EGM. Then Admiral Bulldog. And now we'll go over to S4. Look at him. Just cleave. And then deeper. Kill up these familiars, which are currently killing off the rest of his teammates. Arcade's on the run. So is Loader and EGM. Arcade was bringing in his teammates again to fight again. And there's that power. Did you see snipes up the gem? So we had a buyback during that fight from the Visage, but that was it. Yeah, and that's a two-man RP. Imagine if they were even more caught out, because they weren't mm -hmm. in that bad positioning. That was simply just Nyx going on one target and the fight starting. If they were standing too clumped up, they would just wipe immediately to Alchemist. So, Alliance while ahead. It's refresher wow. time. Yeah, it's, it's up refresher, now. baby. Good luck there, shall we? <laughs> Dying to the creep wave. Because these are super size me creeps on the top lane. But they have that double RP up on Yao. And not to mention, it's a double RP. So he can pop everything he wants to and not have to worry about mana pool like he normally do with a double RP because he has that cheese on him still. So BKB, jump in, throw it off, throw the refresher, and then just do it all over again. And that is going to be the opening for Sila to take this game. No matter how long this game goes, we can go 90 minutes on this game. And LGD's combination can still kill off every single one of Alliance's players. Yeah, they have so good ultis. They have three ultis that go through BKB. So there's not even an option. Like, the BKB on Furin is nice and all. Yep. But there's so many ways they can still cancel them. And when Alchemist gets as close to him as he was in the last fight, there's no way for Furin to deal any form of damage. Sea load is also basically maxed. 
He's, oh, he's, he's, no, got, he's, he's got to sell his drums. He can sell the drums and he can even change the diffuser blade into something like a crit and it becomes even more effective. He bought a new recipe for the diffuser blade. Yeah, he wants to fill it up again. Want to have those oh, this is, chances. Is this like the first time in 20 minutes that LGD have got a ward on the opposite side of the river? I think, can he actually refill it with just buying the new one? Hmm? I don't think he can. I don't think you can either. I think he's actually going to buy a whole new diffusal. And yeah, buy the whole thing, yeah, though, it doesn't now, work. Now he realizes. He's like, um, um, this damn, is it, awkward. damn it. <laughs> Come on, you got the money. Just pay up. <laughs> Does he really want to put that much pressure onto a diffusal blade for himself? I think, I think at this point, Daedalus is even better. Like, just having that is really good. Uh, that's going to be frustrating. That's wasted money, too. That's wasted money. It's not going to be like huge for a PL. No, he, he has 6,000, so it's not really that big. But bottom, the it's tier his tower. one, 55 minutes tier one. Well, there oh. it goes. And they, they can pick up a tier two tower too. Xiao Wei, whoa, stun. It's from DD. They find EGM. Follow up stun from Sila. The familiars will buy the space. Blinding light pushes them back, but Sila still able to get the fist pumps in. And looks like double refresher. Yao's already used it. He pulled Admiral Bulldog down. CZ4 on the side. Now the hex over on Yao. Sila BKB will wear off, but the chemical rage comes up. S4 on his little path out the side. Escape tunnel. Only one lost in that entire fight, and they've got to get back because, would you believe it, PL's pushing inside the base. Yeah, Loda did destroy mid tower during that time, mm -hmm. so base getting even more exposed, but nice fight for LG still, but they can't do this too many times. Next time it's going to be on racks that the pressure is put. Admiral Bulldog was on a little bit of a hunt that he TP'd in to try and find Xiao Wei as well as DDC, but while Xiao Wei's got this blink dagger, also, difficult hero to try and control. Also a great item for him to have. When these fights keep happening, like we saw that fight in the bottom lane where it ended up having a roar just down here in this box. They yeah. come out very, very quickly, and then they do it so quickly, Alliance, even though they're on the high ground here, which is where they want to stand, it takes them a very, very long time before they can get themselves into a better position to fight up against LGD. And in that time, you're already looking at RPs. I Which, by the way, is off cooldown again, even I though his refresher is not. Yeah, and Roshan gonna respawn. I can't remember last time I cast a game with where, five Roshans. No, where there was one guy having seven seven thousand gold, another, uh, another guy also having seven thousand, and then a guy having eight thousand gold. They're just so rich and gear capped. This Roshan belongs uh, yeah. to Alliance. Roshan's gone. So we get well. S4 will get his cheese back again. No, he takes the Aegis this time. Admiral Bulldog will take the cheese. Obviously, Loader doesn't have a slot for anything until he sells those drops. He's got eight point three k gold. Buy something! Well, there's nine and a half on the Nature's Profit. <laughs> you, this, this is in 2009! You can't <laughs> buy back multiple times in a row! There's a new Diffuser Blade level 2. <laughs> this is the first time the Roshan has been killed so many times in the game. Poor Roshan. He actually did. He sold his entire Diffuser Blade so he can pick it up. Well done, Loda. Well, he has it now, at least. Uh, obviously, in his next email to Icefrog, he's like, would you please make it so we can refresh the charges? I don't want to buy this thing entirely again. Whoop, Xiao Wei's getting hit. They realize there's a ward on the high ground now. They've got to back themselves up, because with that ward up there, S4 just is open for initiation. Loda's also going, are we looking at a second heart, or is he even thinking about Satanic right now? He just picked up a Reaver. I... This, I guess this it's gonna a heart. Be, He's gonna heart push. It's gonna be, uh, I believe we saw it in G1 League at the Grand Finals. I'm not sure. I believe it was used in one of the games there where just a PO kept pushing with double heart illusions. This is and not gonna work though if Silo picks up something like a Deadless and sells a Shadow Blade. Because with that Empower buff up too, he is gonna clean up the double hunt illusion as though it's just, it's, it's nothing. Well, it puts the pressure that Sila always has to be the guy to kill them. Because look at how he oh, has to yeah. hit several times to just kill these illusions. Mm -hmm. And with another hot, it's actually going to take even more time. So I guess that's the plan. I still believe that a little more DPS on the PL would be nice. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. Refresh your Sila. Refresh your Sila. Oh, 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 no, the creeps. Live couriers, live couriers. Rage creeps. Yeah. And not your friend, no! 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 Oh! Perseverance gets back to base safely. They're still pushing on the bottom lane, but Didi has found the real loader, and he buys a Battle Fury. So he wants to stack he up his cleave clean. without just having the Empower all the time. Yeah, it's a really good choice, I feel. With the second heart coming, especially. 
And the mid range racks is going down. Yep. They gotta clean it. It's gone. This oh. is the power of a farmed up and tanky PL. They need to defend bottom. They do. They do. There's a lot coming in. The familiars are actually taking this off with the creep wave. With the Illumina that cleans it off. Zhao Wei is just trying to pick up the birds. And DD, again, like these illusions just keep pushing. The only upside right now is the fact that was the ranger axe in the middle lane. It wasn't the melee racks. So the meat shields, the ones that gain the momentum in the lanes, are not available. That is not real, even though it will take you just as long to kill it. Funny thing is that Bulldog is so rich, he could just TP to base, buy a Necro free, and just push with it some, and then sell it. He picks up a Manta style. Uh, Manta style is going to be equally good, even better for a DPS. It's almost like he wants to go win, die, pop the cheese. Bottom. Oh, Blinking by Rexar, didn't catch him. Ooh. We hit the hour mark. There's Silo. He's, he's now getting sick of this. He's getting sick of these. He's popping, popping chemical rage to get rid of the illusions. And S4, he latches TDC. Hex as well. The Colts, he's actually pushed back far enough. The Piglet runs. Beastmaster, blink up, raw. EGM forced out the way. The concoction will still fly up. Xiao Wei trying to beat him down. RP! Catching two. Refresh already used. Aegis demolls up. Skewering down. Nothing but fakes. The Visage will buy back. They want to kill up RK. No supports can come in. S4, be scripted up. The, the base. base, what's happening? The base is, is currently being sacked. Bottom lane, Admiral Bulldog's in here. They have to defend Cobblebox back. And now your secondary RP. Familiar spies in space. Sila beats down Admiral Bulldog. And Loda, nightmare up. Concoction, one stun, two stun. Hold, hold, hold. Slice, slice, slice. Loda, he's gone. The mid racks, the only one standing. seconds. They have to hold the mid melee. The familiars will die as well. If they lose this mid melee, we got mega creeps for Alliance. 61 minutes in. Even Beastmaster now buys BTs. LGD must Travels push. Travels on everyone. They must push. They're going to hold the sidelines and push in base. mid. It's like a shadow blade. BKB. <laughs> <laughs> It's like somebody said, like, you've just won the lottery, buy everything you will never use again. It's Christmas time in Dota. Oh, oh man. LGD, can LGD they... LGD getting the support look of the at crowd. That, look at even the graph change, man. This is a 24,000 advantage. Pulled back to 3,000 experience. Who cares about gold? Loader may even go down to his own quote in the team profile. They will want to push. The tier 2 towers the is divine, now the time. That divine... Sila going for it. You are a man, Sila. You are a man. LGD going big or go Do home. Do they go GG? Look at the TP's bottom lane. They already got support. Loader, Admiral Bulldog. Do they turn? Do they turn? Do they rush the GG? Roar in. They've already found RK. RK goes down. DDC stunned up Sila. He said it's going for kills, but back inside the base. They have to EGM go for is down. They They're going for free. the throne race. And Just now the start of DD. Where is it? The team fours are gone. They have to go back. It's too late. It's too late it's for too LGD. Late. Alliance will take the win here. Loader and Bulldog in through the rear. There's just not enough deeps. Sila, he's trying. He's trying. So oh. close. Oh. 62 minutes, 46 seconds. 31 to 30. Kills me nothing. Throw means everything. Alliance. This is game one up against LGDCN. They chose their opponents. They chose to have this kind of match. And they will have to have this match again. And that game is two coming up. Game one. What kind of a series are we in for, Toby, with this being our game one? I, man, I don't want to say the people that can say is our panel. Over to the boys back in the main hall. Thank you, Toby, and congratulations to Alliance. They knew how they wanted to finish the game. They did so successfully, and they're still undefeated. But what an absolutely amazing game one here on day two of the International. What, what, can, you, what can you say about this? Uh, best game so far. Sick game. <laughs> wow. I mean, it was just as Lotus said in the pre-game pre show. It was the goal, goal doesn't matter. Kills don't matter. LGD were ahead in kills, and it, it doesn't even matter at all. They just did such a good job of split pushing, constantly being annoying. And once that first Rax went down in the top lane, it was kind of the beginning of the end. It was downhill from there. But do you think they could have gotten the throne in time if they had not taken the mid? 
tier three tower. But you have to take. Do a you have to take three. one tier three tower to go for right. the throne. Well, no? well I'm, I'm fairly new to the game, so okay, like, yeah. I'd rather <laughs> have I will explain race. to you later. Yeah, 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 maybe I'll you can have. join it. I'm here. glad we have an expert analyst on on the. But maybe they ignored, um, you know, Ake. Yeah, that's the thing. That, if, that, if that they for me, I was like, hmm, this is nice. You've you know got a blink. Well, blinding light. I mean. That's true. That's a lot of missed attacks. But How they long have does Blinding Light last? They have BKB. Regardless, what I, mean, I don't they think they, they, they could have potentially had Mag TP back and just try and uh, control them with double RP and Kuda, delay Kuda, it. <laughs> That's like <laughs> seven yeah. seconds of disabling. I, I think, yeah, I think they should have taken back at least the Magnus. Yeah. And maybe just got the kill onto Ake, and I think it was the Visage of EGM, ignored mm -hmm. him. Uh, they did have BKB on Sila and also the... Magnus. Yeah, yeah, but not on the Beastmaster, but you needed but the, the Beastmaster, Beastmaster for the Aura, at least. Exactly, for Sila. but he doesn't need to do damage. Just being yeah, here he uses Roar and Aki, too. Mm -hmm. so I hey, man, every bit of damage counts, you know? If you I mean, it was the, a long the shot, though. The they were down five wrecks and with a range at half HP, too. So it was the best move they could do. But let's be honest. I mean, how far along were they from taking the throne? Two seconds? Like, two more seconds and yeah. they got it? Yeah, two probably. RPs would have done the trick. Yeah, I, I really think the yeah. Magnus going back... Uh, only kill Ake and let the Visage just be Visage because he didn't have enough damage Visage. Like, he didn't even have his Axe. No. Um, you can ignore the um, Familiars as long as you just avoid a stun if that's uh, possible. But he doesn't have a way to slow down your DPS because he had like a mech and um, I think a... Did Yao um, have a Rapier? Yeah, yeah, the yeah rapier. Oh, but it takes a lot of discipline to do that, though, to just straight up ignore a hero yeah. <laughs> and go for the T4s and into the throne. Yeah, and someone would have had to have been watching base to actually tell them what was going on when they were all focusing on their jobs in the fight. So but I mean, it could have been theirs. I'm, I'm, I, I think it's viable. I really do. Let's talk about the game as a whole instead, because a lot of different things could have happened by the end, but this, this was the turnout. I think the game on a whole, amazing play by S4, Great yeah. blinding glide and Roshan pit by Ake. Uh, amazing Magnus by Yao. Like, I just feel a lot of these players just gave it their best and we got an amazing game out of it. I was very, very amazed by, uh, by some of the hooks as Paul displayed, like yeah. around the 20 to 30 minute mark. Yeah, he was really big mid game. Um, we can actually take a look at one of the fights. This is S4 actually hooking in with the Zhao Wei, and Sila smartly pops his BKB, just eats his way through the cogs, gets the second kill, and it looks great for LGD. EGM gonna get the worst of it, but then all of a sudden yeah, here comes a decent turnaround. Yao doesn't get the best RP. Loader did bait that one out. Bulldog actually TP'd in and used um, Orchid onto the Nyx, so they stopped a, a potential um, stun into RP. And LGD come out on, uh, sorry, um, Alliance come out on top of this fight. Loda did such a fantastic job of not getting caught out ever. And this is the next to last Rex on bottom lane. They try an RP Admiral Bulldog, but it's all about the familiars. Yeah. They, they were Loda. fighting a four on five, but they just lost so much on every trade. Poor yeah. Loda. And I don't even know, like, you know, um, Yao's RP status actually when they finally push. So even though we mentioned it, I'm assuming it should have been up. Mm. Loda only had, I think, two deaths his whole entire game, and his position was near flawless. Yeah. But yeah, to, to also mention the mid game, Mauk, it was like S4 kept him so well into the game. Uh, just because it's such a scary lineup. Like the Alchemist uh, played by Sila was doing a great job farming. He was always on top of the network for a long time. And they just had a huge amount of stun combos. You got Nyx Assassin, you got Beastmaster. Uh, Bane can also control somebody and also the RP. So the Alchemist could have had the best time in the fights. If it wasn't for S4, really, in my opinion, holding the, the mid game really well with his uh, hero on clockwork, it could have actually been LGD's game even in the mid game. Definitely, but one of the things that I noticed as well was the, the fact that everyone on the Alliance actually got sort of big. So we, we saw that best in the mid lane when Yao had to blink in, reverse polarity, screw him back in, uh, screw the Arca on the Keeper of the Light back to the Bane who used Fiend's Grip, and Beastmaster had already roared him, and then the Vendetta from the Nyx came in, and that was all to kill a Keeper of the Light. So, so they yeah. had to commit a lot of spells just to get one hero. Yeah, they had Ghost yeah. Scepters, they had Force Staffs too, and without Beastmaster with Ags, it's really difficult to lock those heroes down in. They were just so much more farm than And we're talking LGD. about a lineup that had five heroes with stuns. I mean, that's something that LGD China does a lot. They like to pick every, as many heroes with stun as possible. You have the Magnus with the RP, you have the Alchemist with the Concoction, Bang with the Fiend Script, you have... Um, oh, I'm drawing a blank. What else they have? Uh, Beastmaster Roar and Nyx. Beastmaster Roar and Nyx with the stance. Uh, so, I mean, them doing really, really strong uh, in terms of how you could play. And here is, uh, yeah, 
that's the final part of the race. But yeah, they couldn't make the most use of that Magnus because when you have a Phantom Lancer, you just... Uh,